Now that you know about what the kinematic equations are and what they do, I want to take one video lecture to explain why they look the way they do. There are two ways you can prove kinematic equations. One is with geometry and the other is with calculus. I'm going to stick with geometry for now just because it's a little more accessible. I'm going to be proving all four equations starting with number one and going down the list. These proofs are going to be based on the geometry of a velocity time graph, and we know some properties of that geometry and what that geometry physically means. I'm just going to use what we know to prove the kinematic equations. I'm going to draw an example line on this velocity time graph, and we don't need to know the exact numbers to know what different parts of this graph mean. For example, we know that the starting place of the velocity time graph, the y-intercept of the graph, is going to be the starting velocity, which in the kinematics equations we call u. So that length from zero up to that point is equivalent to the starting velocity. And the last point on the graph is equal to the final velocity of the object, v. So these are two things that we know about the graph. I'm going to draw one more line and prove what this last line is equal to in just a moment. This is going to be important for visualizing why this first kinematics equation works in the way that it does. So this line is just the total rise of the graph, just from where it starts to where it ends, not from the zero point. So it's just from where this graph begins to where it ends. And you'll notice that u plus that additional part, which I've labeled in blue with a question mark, is equal to v. So I'm going to write this equation up here. That purple part is equal to the orange plus the blue, or v is equal to u plus this additional section. So I'm just going to prove to you now what this additional section is equal to. Now, I know that slope, the slope of the velocity time graph, is equal to the rise over the run. And I also know that the run of this graph is the total time that this object has been moving for, because time is the x-axis, and that horizontal line is how much of the x-axis has been covered. And I also know that the slope of a velocity graph um, is equal to acceleration. So I'm going to replace these two things in my equation down here. So I know that the slope is a and the run is time, or t. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by t and cancel this out, I find that a times t is equal to that rise. So acceleration times time is equal to that blue line. So I can replace that blue line with acceleration times time, and you can see I've just proved my first kinematics equation. That geometry is why that first kinematics equation works the way that it does. I'm now going to prove the second equation. I know that the area under the curve of a velocity graph is equal to the displacement of the object. So I just need to come up with an equation for the area of this graph, and I'm going to be able to prove that second equation for displacement. I'm going to take that area you can see in the top right corner and split it into two parts um, because this is kind of a complicated shape, but I can split it into a right triangle and a rectangle. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say that the total displacement of this object is the area under the curve, which is just going to be that triangle plus that rectangle. And I know that the area of a rectangle is base times height, and I can see that the height of this rectangle is equal to the initial starting velocity of the object, and the base is equal to the time that the object is in motion for. So therefore, the area of the rectangle is equal to the time times that starting velocity, base times height. So I'm just going to set that equal up there, and that'll form part of my equation. For the area of the triangle, I know that the base is time. And I know from my previous problem that that height is equal to acceleration times time. And I know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, so I'm just going to plug these into that equation. So the area of the triangle is 1 half times time times a times time. And when I multiply all that together, I get 1 half times a times time squared. So that's the area of the right triangle. And when I add these things together in the equation, it comes out to say this. The total displacement of this object is equal to the starting velocity times time plus half the acceleration times time squared, which is actually our second kinematics equation right there. So I've just proved another kinematics equation. The third equation is going to require some knowledge of the area of a trapezoid. Um, there's an equation for the area of a trapezoid which says that it's equal to the length of base 1 of the shape plus the length of base 2 of the shape, all times the height and then divided by 2. So I'm just going to plug that in here. I'm going to say that these are the two bases of the shape, the two kind of flat parallel parts of the shape. And so I'm basically just flipping this on its side just to show you how this equation works. So time here is going to be the bottom, which if I flip it on its side is going to be the height of the trapezoid. So I just plug this into my equation. And when I plug this in, I get the length of the base is u plus the length of the other base is v. So u plus v times height, which is just time over 2. And that's equal to the area, which I know is equal to the displacement of the object. So the displacement is equal to u plus v over 2 times t, which is that third equation. 
And you can see that this equation would not work if the slope was not constant. If I had a shape like this, this is not a trapezoid. This is a more complicated shape. So this is an explanation of why even if you don't have acceleration in the equation itself, the acceleration still has to be constant for this equation to apply because this only works with trapezoids and if the slope is not constant, then the shape is not a trapezoid. And because the slope is equal to the acceleration, the acceleration itself has to be constant here. So this is my third equation. Got to check that off. Okay, this last proof is going to be a little ugly. I can't prove this one with geometry, but I can prove it using two of the equations that we already have. So just watch closely. If I subtract the initial velocity from both sides of this top equation up here, I get v minus u equals a times t. And if I divide out a from both sides, I find that the time that an object has been moving for is equal to its final velocity minus its initial all over acceleration. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace all the t's in this bottom equation with that identity because t is equal to that, so I can replace t with that identity. Now I'm just going to carry out the algebra, and when I do that, this is what it looks like. I'm going to run through this kind of fast. If you want to pause and take notes, you are welcome to because it gets a little ugly for a little while. So I'm just running through this algebra to try to simplify it into one big equation, and when I end up simplifying this, I get this shape, which I can rearrange by multiplying both sides by 2a, cancel that out, and when I add u squared to both sides, that is my fourth kinematics equation. So that proof is based on our knowledge of the other two equations, which itself is based on geometry. So that's basically a mathematical explanation of why all four kinematics equations work in the way that they do. Um, it's all just based on the geometry of a graph. For those of you who know calculus, I can make a separate video explaining why these work in terms of calculus, but it's not really necessary that you know that for the class. This class does not require calculus. Um, just as a hint though, those first two equations, um, those first two equations may ring a bell. They look very similar to integral functions, which you might have taken in calculus. Um, so that's a hint if you want to start working on that on your own. But that's what you need to know for this video, just the basic proof using geometry. Thank you for watching.